Where is the church? <laughs> hey guys, it's Faith Duo. Back with another video. All right, and welcome back to our channel, Faith Duo Family. We're just a Christian couple striving to please God and encourage others by sharing our life. All right, so we're back on the Christian Wake Up book, and we're on chapter four. Four, four. And we're talking about, is Christianity riding the Titanic? Is it sinking? Yeah, um, you know, everybody knows the Titanic. And so, you know, that was a, a major event that happened, the unsinkable ship. And, you know, nobody was aware of what could happen. And, you know, we know that it sank because, you know, it wasn't, I guess, prepared properly and people were off guard. Yep. Where is the church now? Are we sinking? Have we sunk? It looks like we're getting there if we're not careful. So the author says there's three churches that are in the world today. There's the mega-driven consumer, you know, church that's thriving and there's many people and everything's just consumer-driven. somebody's trying to get the money from yeah, everybody. about money. Uh, then there's the dying church. Then there is the fu the new church that has a fragile future. Mm. Which one are we? You tell us. Yeah, which one is your church? What do you feel like your church is? Are you a mega-driven, uh, consumer-based church? Are you a dying church? Or are you a new church where your future is fragile? Like Raph was saying, we need to be aware. You cannot be ignoring the darkness creeping around and expect to bring out the light or make a difference for God. Right, we definitely have to know what's going on. We can't turn a blind eye to it. So if we continue to ignore the warning signs, we're gonna be exactly like the Titanic. Which brings us to the next point. Plug those holes. We gotta plug them up. Prevent the sinking of the ship of the Lord. Right. We need to plug the hole on the reluctance to share the gospel with others. We need to plug the hole on not having a Christ-like attitude. We need to plug the hole on unfaithfulness and be doers of the word. And we need to plug the hole on whatever's preventing us on being prayer warriors, on talking to God, having that relationship with God. We need to plug the hole on whatever's prohibiting us from being a Christian in our way of life. One to two hours a week is not enough. We need to be Christians every single day, every single hour. So we need to be ready for battle at all times. When the announcement comes on to say, man your battle stations, it's something that needs to be take, taken with urgency. We need to get to our battle stations and not be moping around. We need to be alive and we need to be awake and we need to be aware, alert. And so God tells us what we need to do. In Ephesians 6, Verses 11 through 13, it says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against the flesh and the blood, but against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Excuses. The next section is about excuses. We're all guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. Yeah, it gets us all. We always try to blame the next person or just not take accountability, but it's, mm -hmm. it's common. Everybody does it. Our single allegiance needs to be to God. Matthew 6, he tells us to seek first his kingdom. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to make any excuses about why we're not putting God first. Jesus even taught that excuses are not accepted. One good example is his parable of the talents. And we'll put that scripture down below if you want to take a look at that. 
Have we lost our identity? Do we know who we are as Christians? So he quotes a guy in the book that says that statistically you can't determine a Christian from a non-Christian in today's world. And you know, most people are trying to be good and most people uh, that are good are not Christians. And so we need to be able to define ourselves and stand out from the world. In the book, it says this great little phrase that I thought was just hard hitting. It says, in the midst of this revolutionary shift in values, morals, and respect of authority of any kind, Christians need to find themselves. You need to know who you are. How can you make a difference if you don't even know who you are? You can't stand firm on anything if you don't know what and who you are. Yeah, how can we be the light of the world if we don't know who we are and what we're doing and why we're here? Let's take a look at these questions. One of the questions says, why doesn't the church see herself as an army? And I think this was a, a interesting question because, uh, you know, all throughout the Bible, it talks about love. And I think that we think that our love should be, you know, everything, which it should be. And that's why I think we don't, you know, associate ourselves with being in a battle because we're trying to love we're trying to you know just show our love all the time and it's not about uh, this needs to be done this way this what the Bible says and it's like okay I understand which we need to be doing uh, but we just need to do it in love as well the biggest battle is the one the you trying to overcome the evil that's always lurking like trying to get you to do this or trying to get you to do that i mean that's the biggest war that you face and trying to get you not to share the gospel all those little that little war that you think you're having or that little problem that you're having it's little bitty battles that is really really has a bigger picture yeah but we need to think about are we in a we're in a battle and we're a part of an army so I think our aggressive is I mean our mindset is more passive than aggressive and I think it needs to be more aggressive than passive because we're in an army next question how do we stay dressed for battle how do you keep that armor on shiny and ready uh, we got to stay prayed up we right. got to stay in the word I think you have to be as involved as possible the less church you do the more worldly sin you do like mm -hmm. it just mm -hmm. i think it's very important to stay involved and keep all that good armor on you keep the good close last question how may we restore our biblical identity and mission i think it's starts with you you gotta work on yourself renew yourself daily in the word and yeah i think it's just one by one one person at a time and like she said it starts with you and if you can be that fire in your church and your congregation you can light somebody else on fire like we talked about a couple weeks ago Ooh. so we hope that we are that light that fire for you so that you can go back and be able to be that light and fire for others around you in the congregation because we don't want to be a lost and dying congregation. We want to be growing and thriving. So the biggest comfort that we have is Christ said that the gates of Hades will not prevail against his church. And so it's church is always going to be standing. It's always going to be firm. It may get smaller, but it's not going to die. All right. That's all we have for today. We want to thank our first supporter uh, buying us a coffee. You know, the work goes to, you know, producing these videos and making it better, uh, trying to get better equipment or programs. So we appreciate uh, Miss Joy for donating and helping Thank us you. out. We really appreciate it. Uh, but if you could do us a favor and share this content, that does a whole bunch more uh, being able to spread God's word. So we appreciate you. We love you. Be the light.